Hi guys and welcome to this video. Sorry it's a day late, uh, but I've had a busy week at work this week. Same will happen next week, but I'm going to try and get a video done over this weekend uh, so it's all covered. But anyway, uh, today what we're going to have a look at is a way to automatically start the logs in OpenTX when you get telemetry. So let's crack on with the video. So this video comes as a request from Daytona FPV. Now, what Charles was asking was if you power up your transmitter, you don't want your log starting straight away, but you want it so that when you power on your model and you start getting telemetry back, that could start your logs. So we'll have a look at a nice easy way of doing that. But also we could go one step further and say, if we're actually moving that sort of thing to start the logs. So let's head into OpenTX Companion and have a look. Okay guys, so we're here in OpenTX Companion and I've just opened a backup for my transmitter so I can pull up a model that has got telemetry sensors. So what I'll do in a second, we'll just check the telemetry and the first switch that we're going to use is going to be based on RSSI. So this will mean it will work fine with standard receivers as long as you've got telemetry and with flight controllers, that sort of thing. So all we're going to do is if you've seen my automatically resetting the flight timer video, which I'll put in the corner if you haven't and you want to check it out, uh, this is a really simple thing to do. So we're just going to have an AND switch and we're going to find telemetry RSSI. That's it. If we have RSSI, which means we have valid telemetry, this will be working. So to get this to work, all we need to do is go in here we're going to use logic logical switch one and we want to find sd card or sd logs and then we need to set an interval for recording the log so i'll set it to half a second so that's it all done for the first one so if i bring up the simulator we'll, we'll need this in a future example but you can see here we've got to them well we haven't got telemetry this is a bug with the simulator. It thinks we have telemetry when we haven't. So yeah, on the, on your actual transmitter, it will be working fine. So you can see we ha the telemetry is switched off. We So we have no RSSI. So logical switch one is disabled. As soon as we get telemetry our recovery. telemetry enabled, so we're plugging the plane in, we now have logical switch one enabled and the SD logs are recording. So... Let me turn the telemetry off again. So that is the very basic way of doing it, which as I say, will work fine on standard aircraft with receivers, if you want to record logs that way. But what if you've got a flight controller? With a model with a flight controller, it could be sat on the ground for, you know, 20 seconds with a cold start waiting for a GPS signal. So all that time is just wasted logs. It's, it's sort of wasted file space, but also if you want to go through them, it's wasted time searching for the start of a log file. So what we can do is add something else in to see if a model is actually being used. What we're going to do is have a look again at our telemetry sensors. And quite a useful one here would be ground speed. What we can do is say, if a model's moving, start recording. So what we're going to do is a simple A greater than X and we'll find our ground speed. And what we're going to do is just set up a speed. Now it's up to you here. What you could choose to do is set this quite low. So maybe two miles an hour, which will stop any wind buffeting or anything like that but if you're walking with the model it will probably detect it and start recording so average walking speed for a human is between three and four miles an hour so two miles an hour should be safely below that um, so it will detect you walking with the model to where you're going to launch it if you want it so that it doesn't even detect you launching or walking sorry we can set it to say five miles an hour so what this will do is if the model is above five miles an hour and we have a valid GPS or a uh, valid telemetry, so we'll add our AND switch here, then it will start recording. 
Um, what we could do is just leave it on LO2, but say, for example, I don't know, maybe you, it's quite a windy day, you want to have fun and just hover your plane and fly it into the wind with little throttle so it just doesn't move. It's, it's fun. If you haven't tried it, give it a go. It's a laugh. Especially if you go backwards, it's fun. Um, but what we can do is actually set up something so that once it's started recording, it will continue. So what we can do is start a sticky and we'll base that on logic condition two. So as soon as we get above five miles an hour, it will activate the sticky, which will activate our log recording. And to get out of it, what we're gonna do is check not logic condition one. So as soon as we lose our SSI, it will stop the recording again. So we want not LO1. So we need to change this now to number three, and then we can give it a try. So again, that glitch, so we're not actually recording we plug in our model so now we have our telemetry and you notice we're still not recording so i don't convert kilometers an hour to miles an hour in my head unfortunately and it's a open tx guys if you see this please change the units in the simulator to match those in the actual model itself it'd be so much more useful but i know if i put five in here five miles or five kilometers an hour is less than five miles an hour so well, at five kilometers an hour, we're still not activated. So if I bump that up to 10, I think it's around seven, you can see that we're now above that five miles an hour threshold. So logic and prediction three is active and now we're now recording. But say we do that hover thing, we drop down to five, logical switch two is now deactivated, but we're still recording because we're in a sticky situation. <laughs> so we put this back to say 15 and we land so that would be back to zero you, you can see already we've we've pulled out the battery we've lost telemetry it stopped recording so we'll set that to zero and there we go so now we'll take our second flight telemetry recovered. so we've plugged in our battery why has it started recording this, this is a the, the companion lost. is a little bit glitchy sometimes so that shouldn't that shouldn't come up it's getting the old data so if i set that to one it, unfortunately it thinks we're flying right so let's say we're flying at 35 kilometers an hour so we're we're, we're cruising we have our telemetry but we lose link so i'll disable the telemetry and you can see lost. because of that we've stopped recording but as soon as we get our link back recovered. using this setup it will start recording again okay so that's all well and good but if we're flying and we do lose signal our re telemetry recording on the ground will stop if you are fine with that happening then you you know stick with what we have here but if you wanted that data for whatever reason perhaps to know how long you had a, the telemetry lost for if there's other sensors on the actual transmitter itself you'd want the data for during that time then we need to do something about that and it's quite simple what we're going to do is we're going to try and detect when the model actually lands to stop the recording so we haven't changed anything here, but we're just going to add a couple of rows in. So we're going to move this one down. And what we're going to do is now say a less than, and we're going to get our telemetry ground speed. And we'll say two miles an hour, but we also need to make sure that we still have tele valid telemetry. So by doing these, these two things, what we're going to do now is switch a global variable on or off. So it's just a, a basic Boolean state to say we're in the air, we're not in the air, as far as it knows. So the first thing we need to do is create our variable. So I don't know, we'll call it air, I guess, or fly. And this just needs to be a simple zero and one and default to zero. So that's that set up. Now we're going to create some special functions. 
we're going to base this off of logical switch two. So that is we're above five miles an hour. And we adjust our global variable to one and on. We're going to use logical switch three and again adjust, but this time to zero. So if we're above five miles an hour, it sets it to one. If we're below, it sets it to zero. Obviously, in our last little example, we had a flight where we were hovering. I know many people probably don't do this, but let's cover all eventualities. So if you're hovering, it will set that to zero. But because we still have valid telemetry, it won't actually disable anything. So that's now changing our global variable. So now what we need to do is check it. So let's go for our global variable fly. If that is zero and we've lost telemetry, so we need not logical switch one, then we can stop recording. So we'll set this up now to logical switch four. There we go. So just to briefly run over it, we're checking our telemetry is valid. If it is, that's enabled. If it's not, it isn't. If we're above five miles an hour and we have valid telemetry, that one is enabled which will start our recording and also trigger the global variable to switch to one, so a true state. If we're below two miles an hour and we have telemetry, it will set the global variable to zero, so a false state. So are we flying false? Then we landed. Obviously, there is the exception for hover, but we'll show how that's ignored anyway. So this one here, we're just checking the global variable and we want to check it for the full state. So if it doesn't think we're flying and we lose telemetry, as I say, if we're hovering we chances are we're going to be close to us. It's just something that we're doing for fun. It's not something we're going to be doing at the edge of our range where we may lose telemetry. So, uh, or controlling even worse. So that's something that we can sort of rely on if we're at less than two miles an hour and we've got no telemetry there's a pretty good chance we're on the ground and finally is the sticky again this works the same above five miles an hour with telemetry enables it below two miles an hour with no telemetry disables it so let's see that in the simulator so you can see i've brought up the global variables down the bottom so we can check it out that glitch is still there so let's Enable and disable. So this is our base position when we first turn on. Our global variable is zero because that's the default value and we have no telemetry. So logical switch four is enabled. So let's plug our model in. Telemetry we now have below two miles an hour enabled because we are, and we have our RSSI valid. So that's all good. So let's launch, we'll go to 40 kilometers an hour. We're now above five miles an hour, which triggers the sticky on logical switch five, and we're now recording. So I'll show you the hover thing. I mean, as I say, many people won't do this, but I just want to show that it's working. So we go to 0 0.1 miles an hour. So we've switched to zero on the global variable and three is activated, but you notice that four hasn't because we still have valid telemetry. So we're still in a position where we don't want to actually get rid of anything. We've not unplugged the battery yet. So we're still recording. And if we go back flying again, you'll see that the global variable now switches back to one and that's all good. So now we're flying and we lose telemetry. So what happens telemetry now? Lost. You'll see we've got nothing on logical switch one to four, but five is still active because the global variable has not been affected by the telemetry loss. So the log is still recording. Everything's great. Say return to home has kicked in. It's come back into a range and we get our telemetry covered. back. You can see we're still recording. Everything's gravy. We're back to normal. So now let's come in. We'll land the model and then we'll unplug the battery. Telemetry and at that point there, the recording stops. So you can see now we can get the full flight from when we start moving the model up until we land and unplug the battery. So I hope you guys find that useful. Um, let's get rid of that. 
so you can screen grab these if you need them what i'm going to try and do is start putting all this stuff on the website as i mentioned in a previous video so thank you for that guys by the way i i didn't really expect anyone to watch that let alone get the great feedback so thank you very much guys but anyway i hope you found this video useful and uh if you have please remember to give it a thumbs up like subscribe bell icon all that good stuff it will help get this video out to more people so they can learn to do this if it's something that they want to do so thank you guys fly your models like you stole them i'll see you